Welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. We go now back live to the State House. This time we are joined by Eyewitness News Politics Editor Ted Nisi. Ted, good to speak with you again. Good to, good to not be with you, Tim, physically. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is becoming a habit. All right, look, uh, our viewers need yeah, to know exactly. we are taping on a Friday, and this week we saw a dramatic uptick in confirmed cases, Ted, and, uh, of course, an uptick in testing. Both of those obviously are related. Before we get into the economic impact of all of this, stepping back, what is your overall thought of what we learned from this week? Well, Tim, I think, you know, this week showed, I guess, two big picture things to me. One, the pandemic, the, the spread of COVID-19 and coronavirus is, is happening as, we, as people feared in the sense that it, it's going through the population. As there are more tests being done, we are finding more people are COVID-19 positive. Uh, certainly the news Thursday and now this morning that we've reported about the uh, significant number of people affected at a couple of local nursing homes is alarming since those people are so, are so vulnerable. But um, I think on the other end, as we talked about last Friday, the fact that the hospital are not yet overwhelmed. There were only, I believe, as of yesterday, 14 people in Rhode Island's ICU beds. There are about 188 of those beds total um, is a positive. You know, again, for another week, Rhode Island is not yet in a Seattle, New York situation where the hospitals are, are past capacity. But just like last week, I want to be clear, that could happen very quickly if the spread of the virus suddenly picks up or social distancing isn't, isn't followed as much as, as officials hope. So again, the, the longer Rhode Island gets uh, in any place without having a huge amount of spread, the better. But uh, we have to be prepared, I think, as a community for if it takes off quickly. And that brings up the conversation of projections, Ted. Our colleague Eli Sherman did a report this week on a University of Washington study on projections both nationwide and state by state. And uh, that study found that they predict between April 19th and April 25th that Rhode Island could possibly see its peak in both cases and deaths. I noticed the governor got a little bit bristly about this topic earlier this week. Um, and I was wondering if, and she has asked Brown University to do their own projections, and we're still waiting on those on this Friday morning. But I'm wondering if, you know, projections are important, of course, to understand where we're going. But do you think the governor's concerned about what message these projections could send? Sure, yeah, I think she doesn't want people to take to the bank uh, projections she fears are overly rosy. Uh, you know, you see a headline mid-April peak, people might say, okay, good, we gotta do this for another week or two, and then by the end of April, kids can go back to school, we're all back at work, et cetera. Whereas the governor in her Q&A for children the other day uh, warned that while she hoped people could go to the beach this summer, it would be under new rules and the coronavirus will still be an issue. So I think, I think she's trying to manage expectations uh, about how bad this could get. And also, frankly, uh, you know, we, because they haven't released it, we don't know what numbers she's looking at, but presumably she sees something uh, more, more uh, something worse in the uh, numbers that they're looking at as they do their projection. So I think all of that is playing into her reaction to the University of Washington numbers. Ted, we have been, you and I have both been getting a lot of emails from a lot of people who are hurting out there. Uh, the latest numbers as of Thursday, 100,000 people tapping into unemployment insurance, TDI, TCI. That's a staggering, what, 10% of uh, the Rhode Island population that is getting some sort of jobless benefit right now, which is crazy. But that helps you understand why you and I are getting so many emails for people who are trying to navigate that system. And we have taken a different approach here at Channel 12. You and I are trying to help these people out one at a time and then we're doing videos <laughs> online uh, answering their questions because of I said a million times if one person has a question a thousand do. Let's go through a couple of the big questions that we're be we've been getting for folks watching now um, that might not have seen those videos on WPRI.com and I'll, I'll start with you. A lot of questions about that $600 that is, we should point out, an unemployment bonus. Some people are confusing that weekly $600 coming from the feds with the stimulus. Those are two different things. But a lot of people want to know if I'm on unemployment, Ted, and uh, you know I'm hearing about the $600 weekly check, what do I have to do to make sure I get that? 
So our understanding, Tim, is that you don't have to do anything to get the $600 once it's available. The problem is we just don't know when it's gonna actually be available. The, uh, the CARES Act, that huge bill that Congress passed, passed about a week ago from when we are talking now, uh, but the state labor departments, including the Rhode, Island labor of Depart uh, the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training, need the specific rules and regulations from the feds so they know how they are supposed to, supposed to distribute that since it is federal money. And I just checked before we went on the air Friday morning and DLT still had not received this, the, the information they say they need to start giving that out. Um, so the good news is once it goes out, it's supposed to be retroactive. Uh, so people should be getting it, getting the $600 for this period when it hasn't been rolling out yet. It ends July 31st. But the bad news is we, we just can't give people a date certain yet when they'll see that money in their accounts. But it's, uh, you know, you and I check in with DLT multiple times a day. We've exchanged probably uh, hundreds, it feels like, emails with Angelica Pellegrino, their very able uh, communications director. And I, I think th as soon as it's available, they're going to get that information out to folks. Yeah, and there are a lot of questions about that $600. If it's taxable, like other unemployment insurance uh, benefits are, other questions about if that $600 goes towards SNAP benefits, all of those things are still sort of up in the air. And we're working on that, as you say, Ted, to get answers for everyone. Well, I also, and I know you have been getting a lot of questions about that stimulus check for a lot of people that that'll mean twelve hundred dollars uh, for depending on your income that you get and then a certain amount of money per child uh, and we, I already saw some tweets Ted I don't know if you did that some people are already seeing it uh, in their direct deposit uh, right now uh, and people are wondering wow no I didn't actually know that <laughs> uh, yeah I, I just saw a tweet whether it's you know true or not that's that's uh, it, it might be starting <laughs> to come in you always have to verify things on Twitter I suppose but uh, you know I wish I checked my account this morning okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, tweet it out if you got it then you can inform everyone uh, people want to know if they didn't you know if there are a lot of people that actually don't this money goes through the direct deposit that you would get as a refund for your your taxes and people want to know well I might not file tax taxes they're on disability or other reasons that they don't have to file taxes and as you and I talked about online you know the government finds you uh, and eventually it'll get there but if you're not in the IRS system it might take a little bit longer uh, than uh, than say those who did file a 2018 2019 uh, tax return so what we have been told is you will get the money if you're not in the system right now, it just might take a little bit longer. All right, Ted, how about those workers that fall through the cracks going back to unemployment? The 1099ers, the gig mm -hmm. economy workers, uh, help should be coming their way, but Senator Jack Reed is very concerned. The Trump administration is just taking too long. Yeah, and I mean, you know, in fairness, I suppose to the Trump administration, uh, the, this is a $2 trillion bill that passed a week ago, uh, and usually government takes quite a while, but at the, the Senator Reid's point is that Congress passed that because they need money to hit the streets basically immediately because of the cratering of the economy we are seeing right now. Um, and, it, you know, he's wondering why they can't just get quick rules out to the state labor agencies so they can give out the $600, as we already talked about, and set up this new temporary co COVID-19 emergency unemployment program. That's the one that is supposed to cover self-employed workers, 1099ers, uh, Uber drivers, and other gig economy folks. Uh, and again, just like with the $600, the Rhode Island Department of Labor and Training says they need the, the exact rules and regulations from the feds so they know how the feds want the money handed out. Uh, the, the best advice we can give on that, the Rhode Island DLT has a mailing list they've set up where they're gonna email out the information once they get it on uh, how you sign up for those programs when they roll out that link is on our website it's on the DLT website and I think uh, that's the place we're sending people uh, who want more information on that when it rolls out that that seems to be your best bet I, at last check there were I believe almost 12,000 people had signed up for that mailing list which gives you a sense of how many others beyond the hundred thousand who've already signed up for benefits they can get are waiting for assistance the most common question we get is really not a question it's an expression of frustration so many people Ted are waiting to get through to DLT particularly on that teleserve line uh, for unemployment when people are trying to 
uh, say, certify weekly that they are still unemployed so the benefits can keep coming in. And the line is constantly busy. This is a tough one. And uh, a lot of people are getting frustrated. What we have been told by the DLT is they're trying to increase capacity over there so they can handle those calls. And they also put out a tweet, Ted, this week that said, look, if, if you went online to teleserve online and you were told to call in because they need to manually verify something, you're still going to get paid at least for the time being as they work all this out, which is an indication that they are well aware that their lines are bogged down. And, you know, when you hear some of the numbers, Ted, that we got this week from the spokesperson at DLT about how many calls they had to certify in just one day, you can understand why the lines are backed up. Yeah, we were told DLT got, I believe it was about 32,000 people called in on this past Sunday, uh, so a week ago for people watching us on Sunday, for to verify their benefits and get unemployment. So that's 32,000 in one day. They only had 12,000 in a week back in January. So uh, I think, and, and I will say, a lot of the people emailing us are, while they're very frustrated and, and often concerned, they need to pay their rent, their bills, they also do seem to understand that this is an unprecedented, uh, you know, even when we've had high unemployment in the past, in the past, it didn't all happen at once. That's what's crushing the systems right now. It's so many people at the exact same time. Ted, one minute left. You're standing in a ghost town right now. Usually they'd be getting the budget together in different finance committees. We touched on this with the secretary in the first half. The GOP is calling on Democratic leaders in the General Assembly to, uh, with some ideas to, to be able to get the legislature to meet again. What are they saying the General Assembly should do? It, well, you know, in short, there's been no decisions. I think it's very clear that uh, Speaker Mattiello and Senate President Ruggiero are wary of switching to some kind of remote or virtual meeting. Uh, they're worried about public participation. They are worried about just kind of making it not clunky with, with their members, et cetera. Uh, and the other thing in the Senate, they, I believe they think they, need to, they would still need to bring senators in to vote to allow that because it wouldn't be allowed under current rules. So there's complications. I think the bottom line for them is they are hoping that if the state makes some some uh, progress on tamping down, flattening the curve on this, it will be acceptable with safety precautions to bring lawmakers back sometime later in the spring and get their work done in person here, but we have to see. All right, Ted, thank you very much. And as I said, we've been answering a mountain of your questions. You can watch our videos on WPRI.com and that you can learn how to get in touch with us as well. For Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. We'll see you next week on Newsmakers.